Hello, Leo. Welcome to 2016. Happy New Year. This is Gwendolyn of Readings by Gwendolyn. I just want to welcome you back to the channel or welcome you for the first time if you're here for the first time. Um, I hope that this is a year full of promise and joy and wishes fulfilled for everyone. And so without further ado, I will go into the January 2016 Terrascope for Leo. Let's see what Leo's got going on for January. Looks like it opens with a king and a knight. Let's see what else is going on. I'm seeing a lot of um, yellowish cards here, um, which yellow is usually a signal for optimism and cheerfulness. Um, and it's pretty sunny, just like you Leos. You guys are ruled by the sun, which is the fire sign, or, you know, the main fire um, planet. In this case, it's a star, but sun is the ruler of Leo, so it's, it look, it's looking kind of sunny for you guys. I'm getting yellow and a lot of oranges. So those are sunset colors, which means you may have arrived at somewhere where you can just watch the sunset. There's even sunset depicted here, you know, the low sun in the sky here. So I'm getting a lot of sunset imagery, which is peaceful, reflective, um, having arrived. I do see King of Cups is um, one of the first cards that's coming out for you. And that is, King of Cups is usually someone who is um, a perfect partner, an idealized partner, um, someone who is a good husband, a good father. He is compassionate and he operates from the heart. Um, this is usually representing a water sign, so Pisces, Scorpio, or Cancer. But in the, um, in the reverse position, what it makes me wonder is, is someone showing up as um, not as the ideal partner or as compassionate as they usually are, or are they not showing up as a good father? Um, and I see that there's a Knight of Coins also in reverse. So um, Knight of Coins usually is someone who is like the salesman card. He is a knight that has to do with the physical realm, so having to do with money or lifestyle or environment, anything in the physical world that surrounds you. And he is usually someone who's driven by the bottom line. Like, he's cautious and conservative, thinks things over, he doesn't rush into action, but he thinks about what, is gonna, what are the effects going to, going to be. He's in some ways at odds with this um, water king. Um, sometimes I see this, if, if you're a woman, this can be like not having control of your emotions. Or even if you're a man, um, this usually means that, if, especially if you're a water, uh, water sign man, Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio, this, this mean may, that your emotions are out of whack or that you don't have mastery over your emotions. Um, that's King of Cups in reverse can sometimes mean that, that your emotions are are kind of, you're not on top of them. Um, what I'm seeing with this Knight of Coins looking at this King of Cups, both in reverse, it's telling me that your emotions may be off kilter because you um, either are not considering the financial impact of something or that you feel there's some sort of odds between your money and your emotions. Um, there's something going on there. Or literally, it could mean that an earth sign that you know, um, usually a, a knight is younger than the king, so it could be a Taurus, Capricorn, or Virgo person who is looking to this, um, you know, older person or person of authority who's a water sign and is not getting the attention or advice or what they need from that person. Um, they're somewhat in conflict or they're not, they're both looking away. They're not really seeing what's going on correctly. So it could either be a tension between your, your physical world and your emotional world, Leo, because neither of these are fire signs, or it could be that these are two separate people that you're observing that. Um, you could also be stepping away from and carrying a load away from a father and a brother figure or a younger, you know, father and son. 
Um, and, and then these were part of the past or stepping away from those. This is carrying, um, carrying a large burden. This is, this card is sometimes translated as oppression, but what it usually means is, um, or what it usually brings up is what can you put down that's not necessary? So if you're carrying a heavy load right now, Leo, if at the beginning of the year it feels like you've got a lot on your plate, a lot of irons in the fire, this card, Ten of Wands, says, how can you offload some of your responsibilities or some of the things that you're carrying? And what I usually recommend is that if you look at what is it that you are doing that's not necessary? What are you carrying around that you can put down? And alternately, it's this card is the card of the teacher, Ten of Clubs. So this also shows that you can offload some of your... Um, you know, things that are hold, weighing you down by teaching others. This can sometimes represent things that you've collected, experiences, and by teaching others, you can lighten your load. Um, this is Nine of Swords. So this card says a little bit of worry, a little bit of anxiety. Swords represent the mental element. Um, so this means kind of having a little bit of tension over something. Um, I always say when this card comes up, make sure that you're not making mountains out of molehills. You may have some legitimate concerns with this card, but make sure that you're not making, you know, three problems into nine problems or tripling your problems. Don't, don't over worry things here. And I've, I've heard some other readers um, call this card their don't worry card. So if there's something that you feel like you've been carrying a lot and you may have some worries, especially in relation to a king and a knight, an older person, an older male and a younger male that you may have stepped away from, see if you can lighten your load and try not to worry so much of it about it. Don't make more, don't overthink things or carry more than you have to. Um, and in fact, if, if there is a conflict going on between the two of them, try not to carry carry what's not yours and don't overthink things. So that's, that's the beginning of January for you, um, Leo. And then towards the middle of the month, this is interesting. We've got some swords energy, both with uh, seven of swords and five of swords in reverse. Seven of swords in reverse, this is risky business. This is very um, me, me, me behavior. And it's like, I'm going to win at all costs. I'm going to take whatever I need to take to make sure my bases are covered. Um, be careful when this card comes up that you are not putting yourself in a position where you could be risking it all. Or that you're, you're not only considering yourself in this situation, but considering others as well. Um, with these three cards in alignment, all in reverse, it's saying that whatever your interaction with this father figure or water sign is, be careful that you're not just thinking about what can I take away from the situation, that it doesn't affect your envisioning for the future or planning for the future. It's saying that there might be some way that that's, there may be some preoccupation with what's going on with these two that is preventing you from dreaming your dreams and thinking about what you want to create. This is the visionary card, Three of Wands. And this card is all about dreaming what you want to create, visioning the empire that you want to build. That's being held back a little bit by whatever sort of energy is going on with the Seven of Swords, either feeling like you need to protect yourself at all costs, or that you'll do anything to cover your bases, or um, you just need to make sure that you're being truthful in the matter, both with yourself and with this other person. Um, you're, it seems to me that you may be a little bit concerned about collecting spoils after the battle. There is a sun that is setting here. And in this card, I call it picking up the pieces. The swords are, again, the mental element. So it's gathering new ideas and rewards after the sun has set and after the battle has been fought. Um, What's interesting is that I see this sun setting both for the Knight of Coins and for this Five of Swords. So there's something that's going to be ending for both of these characters. Make sure that you gather whatever is left over from 
whatever happens, the crisis, the battle, the whatever is being fought, make sure that you gather the rewards, the new ideas, the spoils of the war. Um, and it's kind of a somber time. Um, but make sure you don't leave things out on the battlefield. Um, just don't feel like you have to take all of them. This is Seven of Swords. This is Five of Swords. This is collecting the spoils of the war. This is sort of taking what's not yours. So be careful of that mid-month. It will lead you to a sense of peace and balance. I, I, for some reason, get in this card a sigh of relief. As though um, you're finally coming to the center road, you're finally coming into balance, into order. This In this card we see the figure has one foot in the water and one foot on land, which means the emotional world is balanced with the physical world. So this is a real card of grounding and emotionally balanced. That's how the angel is able to take the moderate path. Um, and find balance and order and peace and serenity in things. So that's coming up for you in the middle of the month after whatever conflicts, this Ten of Wands, Nine of Swords, Seven of Swords, Five of Swords, as you can see, the swords are just getting less and less, nine, seven, five, they're decreasing. So your thoughts about this whole matter are going to be lessening. So if, either, if you are worried about something at the beginning of the month, Leo, your worries will decrease and you will come to this point of serenity and balance eventually. And then you'll come into your own power. Both temperance and chariot are cards of balance. And this, it's, it's finding balance between two disparate elements and even combining them. And in this card, it's balance between the white horse and the black horse, the, the horse of logic and reasoning and analysis, and the black horse of passion and chaos and adventure. Um, so you're gonna find balance towards the middle of the month. And as you do that, you're going to start trusting your instincts a little bit more. Chariot is a very um, intuitive card. He makes decisions based on his gut feelings, on his intuition. That's what these um, crescent moons represent. And he's a very victorious card. So he can, he can be a bit dominant or domineering, but he always crosses the finish line. And he has his eyes on the prize. He has his goal, single single-mindedly um, in the forefront of his mind. So that's how he achieves his his aims, is he trusts his instincts, he makes good decisions, and he knows which way to guide his chariot in order to get there. So if you feel at the beginning of the month that you're carrying a lot and you're thinking about things a lot, maybe through worry, you know, or fear, or needing to receive something from what's going on, you will pass through an evolution of letting go of some of those thoughts to a place of peace. And then it will bring you strength and you and victory and you will cross that finish line. So that is what, um, just have single-mindedness of purpose. That's what Chariot says. Um, as I said here before, this is a visionary card, so if there's any reason that you're having trouble dreaming about what you want, what you want to establish, what you'd like to create, this three is an inherently creative number, um, see if you can correct what's going on with this King of Cups and um, consider beyond the sphere of yourself, and that may correct your ability to dream what you want to create and bring to yourself. Um, because if you put this card in 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 order and this one in order, this one will correct also. That's just being suppressed or held a little bit below the surface because um, these things are impacting it. Then you have a fresh new start. This is Ace of Wands, which is Ace of Fire. And for you Leos, you are ruled by fire. So this is like a new fresh vitality. This is um, the person who is running out in the race. They are the one who is leading the race. Um, it also has the archetype of the person who is leading the parade, the baton twirler out front. So this is like a fresh new spring. And I see that coming for you towards the end of January, Leo. So there's something related to letting go 
from the past until you arrive in your own confidence, which looks like it's going to be mid-month and making your own decisions and your own establishing your own direction from your own inner peace. And then once you're able to allow yourself to dream a little bit more, you're going to get this sort of fresh, vital, new energy coming to you. Um, and you may begin to feel very established, very, this card Hierophant, uh, represents the establishment. He is the card of organized religion and spirituality. You may have a spiritual revelation. These keys unlock um, spiritual secrets that the Hierophant has access to. So it seems as though at the end of the month, you're going to have like this fresh new spring um, and a new spiritual uh, energy available to you. Just be aware that you may need to, some from time to time, take a time out. This is Four of Swords, which is um, regeneration. It is relaxation, R&R, &R, rest and recuperation. Um, it's taking a break. And as you can see, this is a soldier who is taking a break from battle in order to reflect on things, to regain his strength, taking a, a moment from battle to fight another day. The fact that this is in reverse tells me that you may have some doubts or fears about taking a rest or just um, you may feel like you have to like work, 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 accomplish, 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 you know, keep crossing finish lines, keep achieving goals. This card in reverse says don't be afraid of taking a time out, taking a break. You know, even I always say even God rested on the seventh day. Um, don't feel like that's not available to you. You need to rest and recharge in order to continue achieving the goals that you're setting for yourself. So that's my uh, reading for you, Leo, especially the end of the month looks really fresh for you and it looks like you're going to find a sense of peace and balance um, towards the middle of the month. And see if you can let go of whatever's going on with this king and this knight, even if it's an internal battle uh, about money and emotions feeling off or feeling overburdened. Things looks like look like they're going to be lightening up for you in the middle of the month, and then you're going to have a fresh new energy. Just remember that with all that energy, remember to take a time out from time to time. So that's my reading for you for January 2016, Leo. Feel free to share, like, or subscribe. Um, I want to thank everyone for watching. And I just want to say have a wonderful start to 2016. Thanks so much. Yours in the stars. If you enjoyed the reading, feel free to check out my readings for the other signs and also feel free to share on any platform, like, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching Yours in the Stars.